there, my name is Sam. I'm here in Heifer's Games in Cambridge, and today I'm going to show you how I like to paint miniatures. I've been painting on and off since I was seven or eight years old, but now with the rise of D&D and continuing fame of big war games like uh, Warhammer 40,000, it's a really good hobby to get into. It's therapeutic and lets you develop artistic skills, and I really enjoy it. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine in the colours of the Ultramarines chapter. This should be a fairly straightforward model to get into and should give you some tips and tricks and techniques on how to better paint in the future. So let's get started. The things you will need and some things that are quite useful to have. The model you wish to paint, some acrylic paints, an assortment of paint brushes and a water pot. You also find it useful to have a model holder or something similar, some paper towels and any extra acrylic paints you can find. The model I'll be painting today is a standard, easy to build Space Marine Intercessor. Warhammer is fairly easy to source and Space Marines are among the simplest to paint. Once you've got your setup together, start by giving your model a primer in some form of dark colour. For this one I'm using a bad on black from the Citadel range. For this stage I'm using quite a large brush and making sure that I get the whole model in a nice uniform coat. Starting this way is quite useful because it gets rid of the grey plastic colour that your model starts off as and means that shadows are more realistic later on. This stage can be quite time consuming so if you have a large number of models to paint, getting a spray paint of some sort might be a good idea. Make sure during the stage you are coating the entire model, even the odd places in this uniform black. Make sure at the end of each stage you leave your model enough time to dry, not doing so might mean that the paint mixes and will decrease the quality of your miniature. Also get into the habit of washing your brushes very thoroughly between each use, it will make sure that they last a good deal longer. And close any paint points that you aren't using to make sure the paint doesn't dry out. Next step is to begin painting the model with its primary colour, for this one I'm using Macrag Blue. This is quite a dark blue to start off with, allowing me to build up through some lighter blues to make some good shading. Also, I'm not trying to cover every single crack and crevice that I painted black in order to leave some areas dark and to paint some areas lighter. In order not to overpaint the model, don't try to use the whole of the brush and don't go back over areas to try and make sure that they're absolutely perfect, especially where there are cracks and crevices. What this will mean in the long run is that the areas that naturally catch the light, that catch the paint, will become lighter and the areas that don't, which you have to work hard for, will naturally be darker. And the shadowing on the model will look more realistic as a result. I'm also not painting over the Space Marine's bolt gun in blue, as black is its main colour rather than blue, which covers most of the rest of the armour. Whilst painting your model's blues, or its primary colour, if you are at any point unhappy with how the shading looks, one option is to go over it with some form of wash. The Sizzle range has a good number of washes which they name shades, which are thinner and darker than other base colours, which allow them to get into the recesses of the model much easier and paint them darker, which overall gives some good shadowing effects. Next up is to brighten up this primary colour, and to do this I'm using dry brushing. For this you will need a slightly worn up brush, a brush you don't really care about, and not too big, not too small. The way it works is that you take some paint, but take most of it off using paper towels, and go back over the areas that you wish to brighten up with the, a slightly lighter paint. For this I'm using a slightly thinner and slightly brighter paint called Techless Blue. As long as you're not adding the paint too thickly, it creates a lighting effect that makes it look very much more realistic. Again, don't feel the need to paint every single part of the model. Do focus on the places that would naturally catch the light, such as his pauldrons or the top of his backpack. step is the same again, it's just using a lighter colour. For this I'm using Glothurn Blue. The same technique still apply, I'm just using even less paint and only really applying it to the areas that would really catch the light. The effect that you should see when this is all done is that the lighter areas are the areas that would naturally catch the light and the darker areas are the areas that you've neglected a little bit which would naturally be shadowy. Now we move on to the finer areas, which I refer to as detailing. For this, I'm using quite a small and fine brush, and I'm also using the crease of my hand to make it even finer by using a little bit of water. Starting with Balthazar Gold, I'm painting his Aquila, his chest piece, and also the trims of his pauldrons. The trick with detailing is to use the very tip of the brush. It doesn't have to be a particularly small brush, but you do have to use the very tip of it, 
and to gain more control, try and hold it as close to the tip as you can without it being uncomfortable. Here you can see me using the crease of my hand to make the paintbrush tip fine again. This is another good habit to get into to make sure you can maintain the fine point in your paintbrushes, particularly your small ones. stage I'm using a dark wash called Nulm Oil to make the gum metal look a little bit darker in the recesses and make it just look a little bit more realistic overall. Here I'm using Lead Belcher again to do some dry brushing on the bolt gun to make it look a little bit more scratched and to make it look a bit more battle worn. Now I'm changing up to Mephiscan Red for a couple of details, namely the wax purity seal on his right shoulder pad and also his eyes. For his eyes, which are particularly small details, use the very, very tip of quite a fine small brush. And don't even be afraid to take your time over this. Now I'm tackling his utility belt with Mournfang Brown. Now switching to Agrax Earthshade, which is another wash, I'm using this to darken the utility belt and also to muddy up other areas of the model to make it look even more battle worn. Side note, Agrax Earthshade happens to be my favourite paint in the Citadel range for this reason. It can take a model and make them look like they've been on campaign for quite a while. Now I've gone back to Morphan Brown to catch a bit of the model that I missed earlier, which is the Purity Seal Parchment. I'm using the brown here as a base coat, ready for a slightly lighter colour in a bit. And here, same again with Balthazar Gold to catch the Aquila symbol on the bolt gun. And now I'm dry brushing with a paint called Screaming Skull to go over the parchment I've just painted in order to make it look like discoloured paper. And now I'm switching to Ceramite White to paint some of the iconography onto his two shoulder pads. I'm using Ceramite White for this because it's quite a thick white, so it means that the blue won't bleed through it once I've painted quite a thick coat on it. This can be a little tricky, and possibly even harder than doing his eyes, so only attempt this if you're really confident. Some people choose to use transfers, but I quite like to do it by scratch.
coming into land alone with some final touches. I'm just using a fine brush and flattening it down a little bit and applying some of that black to the purity seal to make it look a little bit like writing. What I'm also doing is applying some band black to the base so that I can do his base properly another day, but for now that is about it. So there you have it, one veteran ultramarine space marine. I hope yours comes out even better. So that's how I painted this miniature. I hope you find this video useful and it gives you some encouragement to take the, this hobby in the future. Have a good day.